an EX model, and we're also going to talk about the Kia Sportage LX all-wheel drive. Now, this isn't really a comparison. What we're doing today is we just got our programs for March. Programs are just the sales on, basically. And last year, when coronavirus decided to visit us and the car business just tanked, Kia came through with a program that actually gave us a record month, and it was Kia makes your payments for six months. Well, they just announced that same program on these two cars. So of course, anything with a program like that, I gotta say, contact our sales department for full details. But that means we're gonna take a closer look at a Forte and a Sportage. We're gonna do it a few times this month probably. So we'll have lots of chance to answer your questions. But in the meantime, here's how things work around here. We're gonna spend about a half an hour doing this today. Uh, so if you're just joining us and you're not live, grab a snack, grab a beverage, you can hang out with us. We are gonna answer every question you can think of because you can ask them right here if you're uh, on the live. If you're not on the live, uh, what you can do is you can skip ahead to the three minute mark and that's where we'll really get going. If you don't skip ahead, what I'm gonna do is show you how to join us live. So let's do that right now. Robert from Australia is saying hi. Ooh, that reminds me, I have to email someone back from Australia. I will do that this afternoon. All right, here we go. This is uh, how to join us live. If you are not live with us, just go to YouTube, search for Brantford Kia, you're probably already there. Just search for Brantford Kia, and if you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock on our YouTube page, you are going to see the live video tab. Come on, hurry up. Oh, there we go, live tab right there. So you'll see the live tab right there. You're gonna click into that, and when you click into that, you're going to get an ad, which is for today. Oh, what is this one for? Can of flag, oh, Polaris. I'm okay with that. We need some little fun stuff like that around here. All right, skipping that out. There we go. You can see a bunch of my regulars are on. Some of them are suggesting they pretend, for instance, maybe you should drop a like in the comments. I would appreciate that. If you could do that, that would help me out. Uh, I'm just trying to blow this up a little bit. There we go. So now I can see your comments across the room over there. All right, let's talk uh, what's going on. So first of all, I've been told that we are gonna see the Kia Carnival. This is just our news section for those of you that are not uh, wondering why I'm going off topic for the next minute or so. I've been told that we're supposed to see the Kia Carnival, which is the new minivan, this month. Now, I haven't seen programs on that car, which means we don't have the sale detail, the interest rates, those kind of things. So I'm a little hesitant right now, but they've told me it's coming this month. So Kia can, if you're listening, I could use some carnivals like every other dealer in the country, I'm sure. All right, I have no pull with them. So just uh, so we know, uh, 20 seconds to go. What else was I gonna talk about? Is there any other news that, you, that I should have mentioned? You can still visit our virtual auto show. We still have a, um, so it's kiavirtualautoshow.ca. You can visit that. And there will be a um, vehicle unveiling this month, which I'm pretty sure is the Kia Stinger. So uh, they haven't told me anything because they don't tell me anything at all anymore. So, all right, there we go. Three minutes in, here we go. What we're doing today. Like I said, this is not really a comparison. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this car because you can get it right now for six months of no payments. And of course, anytime I say that in this whole video, contact our sales team for full details. I'm just uh, talking about the cars. I don't really talk about the programs that much. And the same thing over here, six months of Kia making your payments. So this is Kia making your payments. So last year when we did this, we had the best year, our best month ever when they did this on, I believe it was a Sorento in the Forte. This makes a fairly inexpensive car very inexpensive. And when I say fairly inexpensive, there's a reason that nobody else makes small cars anymore, and it's because they can't really compete. So let's just take a look at what we've got here. Instead of going to the uh, computer screen, we're gonna go over here. Here we go, 21,195. That is your MSRP for this car right there. We're gonna talk about all the options in it. That is a fairly good price when you start looking at the features you get in this. And again, other manufacturers may push you towards their SUVs because they don't have anything like this, and you're not gonna find an SUV with this kind of equipment uh, for 21-ish thousand dollars. This one over here is the LX all-wheel drive, 27,795. Now, those of you who know me know that I like to talk about the Seltos in and around that price point. And let's just cover that really quickly. Seltos is still here. Seltos is always a great deal. Residual values are super strong on that. Uh, if you have a key already, there's loyalty uh, programs on that, so you can save a lot of money that way. The Seltos is gonna offer you a little bit more technology for the price point compared to a Sportage. That's kind of where its thing is. The Sportage, and I do say Sportage here because we are in Canada. I realize that not everybody else is, but in Canada, that's how you say it. The Sportage is gonna offer you a little more size, a little more power, uh, some towing capability, and uh, just a few other advantages. The, the rear seats, we're gonna show you some things as well. So there's lots going on in the Sportage that we should talk about more, but we don't. 
But I brought in an LX all-wheel drive because it's a little bit lower end in that. You can move a long ways up in the Sportage lineup and get some really nice luxury features. And I brought in what I think is kind of the perfect um, Forte. If you can stretch for it from the LX, I think this is sort of a little bit better deal. And this is a new sporty blue color. And I'm not sure if that color is showing up perfectly, but if you go see my Instagram, uh, it looked like it was pretty close on my Instagram on my phone. Uh, it's a really cool new color, so we're going to talk about that. So. Because we did an Instagram poll this morning, and I think 64% of you at time of filming here, 64% of you said you were more interested in the Sportage than you are in the Forte. At that point, we're gonna start with the Sportage and we will move to the Forte. I think that works well. All right, outside we'll talk about, first of all, I did not clean this vehicle the way it should be cleaned. And I apologize for that. Some stuff goes on sometimes. You don't always get to have everything perfect. But we're gonna look inside first. This one has cloth seats. And um, again, a little bit of dirt in there, a lot of dirt in there cloth seats, but they're very comfortable. They're height adjustable. So that lever there adjusts the tilt on the seat. But this one here, you can pull it up and crank it up. It kind of works like a pumping mechanism and it lifts the seat up or you can push it down and it lowers the seat. So you have some height adjustment there in addition to a tilt and telescopic steering wheel. When you hop in here, they've done some updates. So this is one of the very first new cars that came out. We started working for Brantford Kia and you could not on an LX model get a screen like this. So this is our new um, eight inch screen. It came is new for this car in 2020. And it really changes what we have in this car um, from a technology standpoint, because you have things like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In a Celtos at this price point, you're probably looking at a very similar screen. You might move to EX Premium where you get a 10 and a quarter inch screen. So like I said, there's some of the technology differences in that car. Uh, but like I said, you gain a lot in this car as well. It just depends on what you're looking for. So then again, the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is really important in my opinion, because that brings navigation to this car through your cell phone. And of course, Android Auto uh, with Google Maps or Apple Maps, those are the most up-to-date uh, maps in the world. And the one big benefit with the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay maps is it's not just that the maps are up-to-date. So if you're in a new subdivision that has the streets, but the routing information continually be is continually getting updated. So when it sends you on a route, if it finds that local traffic or regular traffic takes a different route, it's going to send you down that route and it can be quicker. And I've found, especially driving in the country, in cottage country in Canada, um, you know, where I go camping all the time, is that um, I can save a lot of time by using Google Maps over a factory nav just because the routing information, it uses a little bit more of intelligence and uh, it can change that over time. And it can also work with you with traffic. So it's kind of the best maps. I don't want to knock Kia's uh, integrated system of navigation if you have that on your car because it's still very good. Um, but uh, many of us Kia employees here continue to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well as the factory nav. So that is a nice feature to have here. And I just want to show you the clarity of the screen as well. I'm filming a screen right now. You can see the dirt marks on the camera, um, but I'm filming a screen and you can see the lines in the floor. Uh, I continually point this out because I, I'm always amazed when I hop in competitors' cars. The backup cameras on so many of our competitors' cars, they're just not very good, even on high-end cars. So excellent camera system here. And I think that's important, especially in SUV. You sit a little taller if you're looking for something behind you. It's just a little bit tougher to see out the back. So you want a clear camera. And this adjusts very well to daytime, nighttime. It's very good. Um, sometimes you can adjust them. No, nope, not with this one. So okay. We're going to put it back in park there. Scrolling down here, manual climate controls, simple and easy to use. Again, if you're looking for some technology, you can move up to an automatic climate control system in this car. Um, Celtos at a similar price is going to give you an automatic climate control system. So you've got some options for technology there, depending on what you want to do. But again, this one has that six months of Kia making your payments, which is pretty cool. Rump roasters are pretty much standard fare in almost everything we sell right now. I think everything we sell. I can't think of a car without them. So you do have those heated seats. And of course, you have the typical Kia stuff. Sometimes we do some sort of blend of either USB ports or USB and 12 ports. Uh, so this is, of course, the typical blend. Uh, depending on the car, sometimes they have an extra USB. Sometimes you have an extra 12 volt port. So these are two 12 volts and a USB port. You can charge your phone. And that's where you would connect for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Nice little spot down here. A six speed transmission, no dual clutch transmission, no CVT or IVT as Kia calls it. None of those transmissions. This is a traditional automatic transmission. You can swipe it this way and shift it on your own. And um, what's nice about that is 
That is really what allows you to have that 2,000 pound towing capacity. A lot of cars in this class either cannot tow or it tops out at 1,500 pounds. So 2,000 pounds gives you a little bit extra. It gives you a good cargo trailer and including a small camping trailer. So you can take your family camping with this, uh, including a small camping trailer, which is kind of nice. And that is all about the transmission there. So six speed, automatic. One thing this car does not have is a heated steering wheel. You can get that if you move up, but by not having that, um, I'm actually a fan of it. Maybe this sounds silly, but sometimes the leather wrapped steering wheels, I find like I can scratch my ring on that. Whereas something like this, um, you just have that durable grippy feeling there and you have the same feeling on here in the gear shift so maybe that's a silly thing uh, i kind of like it but i get that nobody else does everybody wants the leather wrapped and uh, you still have the leather wrapping down here this is probably artificial leather coming down here drive modes you've got three of them here you've got eco normal sport that's sort of the typical thing that we used to do uh, basically you want to use the normal mode for normal driving if you drive efficiently anyways you may find eco saves you a little bit of fuel but you have to drive efficiently as well and then of course sport mode really punches up this car and this car with 181 horsepower has a little bit more sporty potential i would say than maybe something like the seltos a little more off-road ability too we're going to talk about um i don't know if it's more off-road ability but i feel like this has a approach and departure angles that are a little better this is the hill descent control and a four-wheel drive lock button which can lock all four wheels you don't have to hit this button when you're driving in a four-wheel drive it will figure it all out on its own it's a fantastic system called dynamax designed by uh, Magna International, which is a Canadian company for snow. But this does allow you, if you're stuck in spots, to get out. Um, little spots here just to put everything there, little areas there. Um, one thing that the Seltos does not have that this does, which is, it seems to be a contentious thing. I, I didn't realize this was gonna be a big deal. Uh, but up here, right above the mirror, just so you can see where I am, above the mirror, um, this Sportage still has a place to put your sunglasses up here, whereas in the Seltos, you're going to put it in your center console in a tray there. So a lot of people are saying it really should be up there. So this car, of course, still has that. Coming across here, you still got cruise control, which you would expect. Uh, the multi-information display in the center there. So you've got a lot of information that can be displayed here, including things like, let's just jump across. Oops, we don't want to go that way. Hold on, where am I? There we go, settings. Uh, oh, that's the traction control on and off. So, oh, good, it's on. Okay, so yeah, you've got, um, oh, there we go. Lots of different menus there. Ignore the fuel efficiency. This car has been idling for a bit, but good information here, including the now the ability to switch to miles per hour. You never used to have that in the early uh, vehicles. Now you can switch to miles per hour. So that's what these controls control right here. Cruise control over here. And then, of course, your Bluetooth and audio type controls over there. Automatic headlights is something you would expect. And that's kind of the basics. So again, this is an entry level-ish, um, smaller but larger midsize, larger smaller SUV, and it drives very well. So um, again, a little more sporty feel potentially. So I'm gonna turn the key to the off position for a second. We're gonna hop back out. So in this car, again, everything we showed you, and we're, get, we're gonna take a look at the back seat space and the trunk in a couple minutes here, but everything we showed you there um, if you don't need the four wheel drive and you don't really care if you have a hatchback, and we're gonna talk about hatch in a second, you're gonna find a lot of what we showed you and even more of what we showed you in this car. So again, what we just check out the price again. MSRP pricing, because that's what I always use on my videos. MSRP is $27,795. Now you're gonna say, okay, what if I wanna go a little bit more efficiency? What if I wanna be a little more value oriented and I still want a key to make six months of my payments? Now we're in the MSRP of 21195 So let's hop in the Forte. Now, I get it. These are different cars. I'm not saying that these even compare, um, but I think it shows the value of a small car when we start looking at some of the features in this. So same idea with the seats. The manual seat, exactly like I described in the Sportage. You have the uh, tilt and then the, the height adjustability, tilt telescopic steering. But now you're getting into features that you don't have on the Sportage for a lot less money. So again, you don't have four-wheel drive. But you do have blind spot detection, lane keep assist. So that means the car is capable of steering itself to keep it centered in the lane when it sees the lane markers, which is pretty cool. Over here, you have the same style screen as we just had on the other car. I'm gonna turn the fan off. So again, same thing again, same exact screen. I'm gonna turn the radio down a tiny bit here. And we'll just let it do its thing come live. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, connectivity there. Throw it in reverse. You get the same camera, so again, same, same, same at this point, but now we start talking about value. Same, same idea here. A little different style of um, dial here. You used to have one, two, three, four on the um, fan speed for the Sportage. This one's got multiple settings there, but same idea there. But now, let's just get the gear shift out of the way. Let's take a peek down here. You've got a little phone holder up here. In this car, 
it's a wireless phone charger. So you drop your phone there and it is wirelessly charging. Again, we said the same sort of thing down here, two USBs and then a 12 volt down there. So you have the option there. Both these cars can take your music Bluetooth across and that's what I would do. Same type of idea down here. Down here, again, rump roasters, that's what we expected, but now you're adding a heated steering wheel and the drive modes add a smart mode. So I'm just gonna cycle through for a second. I'll show you here on the dash. You have normal, sport, and smart. So there we go, normal, sport, and smart. Smart is the new eco mode, and it really is a good eco mode. Um, it works a little better to me to predict the way you're driving. And remember when I said in the Sportage that if you drive efficiently anyways, um, then the eco mode works great. What the problem is, is if you're a little bit of a lead foot or every now and then you wanna be a little bit of lead foot and then you're eco, um, the eco mode will always resist the downshift. It will resist giving you power until you sometimes floor the pedal or give it a lot of gas. In this car, it will sense how you're driving. It'll put it in eco wherever it makes sense. But if you're heading on a highway on-ramp or you're passing someone on a country road, it will sense what you're doing and switch it out of that eco mode. So it'll give you the downshift you need. And of course, this one is an IVT transmission, which is better for efficiency, um, has a little bit more range in gearing, and it's actually pretty peppy still. I quite like this transmission myself, so uh, big there. LVL says, hello from Massachusetts, USA. Well, hello from Brantford, Ontario. This one changes to the leather gear shift knob, and again, I don't uh, disagree with that. You also have the leather steering wheel here. So again, those who want a little bit nicer feeling, you're stepping down in price, but you're getting more features because it's a car. Over here, when you do shift to the manual mode over here, it right away switches in sport mode, so you can just have some fun by making it feel more like a manual transmission by doing that, and it goes into sport mode. But you can shift through eight ratios. It's an IVT, so it has infinite ratios between there, but the eight ratios really give you the ability um, from, to have that sort of sporty feel. My boss says hello from Brantford in the room right next door to Peter. So my boss is here, he's watching today. So if you guys have questions for him, he'll jump on and off as he can. All right, we got cup holders down here, same type of stuff. One thing that I do appreciate about the Forte, the styling in here is a little bit more Stinger-esque. So you have a little bit of uh, the vents over there. And what I think is nice is in the lower level Seltos and Sportage, you have a hard plastic here, which again, I don't think matters. But in the Forte, again, we're down in price on this car, but you have that soft touch armrest there, which I just think is a kind of an interesting feature. All right, well, last thing I'm gonna do here is just adjust my seat to where I need it to drive this car. And that's important because we're gonna go rear seat space in a second. Um, if you guys have questions, now's the time to ask them. I'm gonna work my way over the computer and then we're gonna go rear seat space, trunk space, and we're gonna help you see which my vehicle might work for you. And maybe both of them do. Right now with the 0%, um, or sorry, not the 0%, the six months of Kia making your payments, that kind of uh, makes these cars just a really silly good value. All right, so let's go over the questions here, see if there's anything I'm missing here. If you guys asked a question, feel free to ask it again. I'm gonna scroll through the best I can, uh, but don't be shy to ask your question, even if it's your first time here. All right. Da, 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 da. Comfort mode on 2018 Sorento feels really bad, drives horrible. Okay, so Jameson says he doesn't like the Sorento comfort mode, but I have another friend who's not on right now from Florida, I can't remember his name right now, and he absolutely loves comfort mode, tells me to praise it all the time. So different drive modes make the car better for different people, I think that's a great example. Wait, Peter, what are the engine sizes? Great question. So 181 horsepower over here on the Sorento, and you get a 2.4 liter engine to do that. Now we have that 180-ish horsepower mark in other vehicles, but oftentimes it's a 1.6 liter engine with a turbo. So this is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine, uh, and that gives you that 180, 181 or 180 horsepower? Oops, slip of my, I think it's 180. Somebody's gonna correct me now, aren't they? Okay, hold on, let me just double check because now I feel embarrassed. 181 horsepower. I know that one horsepower really mattered to you guys. So 181 horsepower over here, and over here you have a two liter, 147 horsepower engine. Uh, if you buy something like the Seltos, so again, when you're thinking Seltos versus Sportage, the Seltos has this engine and transmission in everything but the top trim. So you're getting a bigger vehicle in that. And that's why some people like the Sportage as well. It's got that a little bit more powerful engine. Uh, so Seltos is gonna give you a little bit more technology, a little tiny bit more efficiency, whereas the Sportage is gonna give you a little bit more room but you also pay for a little bit extra because it's a bigger vehicle with more capacity, more capability. All right, so let's keep going. Someone said they appreciate me doing this every day. Well, think, make sure my boss hears that because uh, he's the one that gives me the time to do this, which is nice. Okay, let me just see if there's any other questions in here that I missed. Da, 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 da. 
All right, I don't think I missed anything. If I did, we'll come back to it. Feel free again, if you've never asked a question here before, feel free to ask it. Uh, we're at 25 likes night right now, 25 people on, but you guys don't understand the math on this. We're 26 people on. Uh, the math on this is gonna be about 200 people on, 200 people plus. Do me a favor, hit the like button. We're gonna go for 40 likes today. So it's only about 14 more likes right now. We got 13 more likes to go. All right, let's jump in over here. I just adjusted the seat on this car. So let me show you the back seat space. A lot of people shy away from compact cars because they say, you know what, I need something with a little more space. Well, how much space do you need? Do you need enough space to fit a six footer inside? Let me show you how easy it is to get inside here. Did that look difficult or uncomfortable? I'm gonna wager that it probably didn't. Good headroom here because the roof kind of tilts up a little bit um, and you've got great legroom. And the one thing I wanna point out, I used to talk about the Kia Rondo, the last generation Kia Rondo for great passenger space. That's what we used to talk about. So previous generation cars, that was a great example of passenger space. But what I wanna show you here is on the Rondo, my legs were not flat like this. In a lot of our competitors' cars, you don't have a rear seat that you can be comfortable in with your legs flat on the seat. At six feet tall, I've got all the height I need because in my mind, as long as I got an inch or so of headroom, that's all I'm gonna need. I don't need five inches more. So I'm gonna be comfortable back here and I've got my legs flat on the seat. That is the difference right there in being able to go for an hour or being able to go for six hours. You can go for a long trip, family trip, family vacation in this car and be comfortable. One other thing I'll just show you as I'm back here, if you've got kids, this is one of my favorite features that they have in a lot of Kias. It is plastic back here. And some people say, well, why would you do that? Well, fabric's hard to clean. Plastic just wipes down with a wet cloth. And I've got kids that always sort of leave their foot marks here. Uh, if you've ever seen my car in these videos, we often throw it in here. And I never clean this part for the videos. And it's just so dirty. But it wipes clean with a white uh, or with a wet cloth. We've also got the vents back here as well. And on the passenger side, All right, are we back? Are we good? Frozen. We're back and we're, okay, so know what happened there, guys? This is hilarious. My car is actually in the shop right now and they pulled it in and um, I, I'm close enough to the shop where I work here that my Bluetooth came on in that, um, in that car. So I apologize. Um, that's what happened. <laughs> That's why I couldn't solve it. So anyways, okay, so where we were, we were in the back of the Forte. Pat's gone off to turn off my car. So when he gets back, I'll just tell him I turned the Bluetooth off. Um, couldn't think on my feet there. All right, so we're gonna go back in here. We're gonna shut the door over here because we don't want people in here. I turned the Bluetooth off, we're good. So Pat's coming through again. Say hi to Pat, everyone. There he is. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're gonna jump in the back of the Sportage here. Uh, I do apologize for that, guys. Didn't think of that through. And uh, when they start my car, I have my Bluetooth pairs. Okay, 
in this car, you have some advantages. The, the, I mean, you do pay more for a Sportage, but you have a few advantages. I think that seat is a little further back um, from where we are, but um, it is a little further back. Yeah, Bluetooth does work very well. When you see how far away, how far away we are from the shop, uh, Bluetooth connected very well over the distance. So when you get in here, uh, you've got some... Uh, yeah, we just did a, a Kia ad for Bluetooth range, and I had no idea that was a part of it. In the back of the Sportage, headroom is similar. We've got a little bit more. You can sort of see a little bit more headroom here. Legroom, same type of thing. I probably got a little bit more. Now, this is one of our cars that doesn't have the plastic back seats. Not the end of the world, not something that bothers me, but I kind of like the plastic back seats. However, you do have the advantage of, in the Sportage, having the seat sit square. Now, when it is square like that, I'm extremely uncomfortable, but it is 90 degrees to the cargo floor. That means if you put a box in, you can hold that box in place. What's nice about this is I can find any setting I want. I think there's about 16 settings or something like that. Uh, between where I was and where I am, I'm practically laying down now. I'm very comfortable back here. Too, uh, too laid back to have a nice chat with you guys. But it is very comfortable back here, even on this LX all-wheel drive model. Sometimes you have to move up on the higher trim levels to get that kind of recline. Uh, this is the LX all-wheel drive. You get that. In the Seltos, you have two positions. You have one and then one more further back. This one's got many more, and that might be another reason to go for this car. So same thing down here with the seats. All of our cars have a really strong raised seat here a raised seat like that is going to be far more comfortable on a long drive if your knees are up in your chest you're not comfortable and that's why i criticize when people say hey it's okay we got a third row suv sorrento is a great seat for me for up to an hour or so it's not something that i want to sit in the third row seat on the sorrento for a long time so don't lay too much or go take a nap yeah i, I am due for my little siesta you know all right so uh down here same thing with the armrest it's raised off here it's got the cup holders and it is a little um, just at the right spot for my elbow, which is where you want it to be. So again, great space in here. Now, again, because we're talking about that six months of Kia making your payments, um, you can get this car with a panoramic roof. Can't get that in a Forte, uh, but that's something worth considering. And if you've ever wanted a, you know, the, one of the best sunroofs in the business, um, right now is the time to buy that car. It's six months of Kia making your payments. The other thing, uh, somebody just asked about towing capacity. I did mention that earlier, and I don't mind repeating. That's why I want you guys to ask. If I, if you missed it, that's fine. 2,000 pounds on the Sportage, and the 2,000 pound towing capacity um, makes this car capable of more than just a basic utility trailer. You can buy a lightweight camping trailer, and uh, there we go. Somebody said, I bet Peter hides in a Telluride and takes naps. First of all, I don't hide in the Telluride and take naps. That's where they'll look for me. I hide in the Forte and take naps. Anyways. All right. So uh, one thing I want to point out here, there is a dirty side of the car because I did not clean this side of the car for you guys because I'm lazy and I take naps. Um, but you have a really nice approach and departure angle. So that's what's called a departure angle there. So if you are off-roading a little bit, this is not a Jeep Wrangler by any means, but if you go to that cottage road and you want to kind of go down maybe those fire roads when you're camping or those logging roads, you can see with the all-wheel drive model, you have pretty good clearance here um, to approach some pretty steep stuff, far more than you'd ever want to approach in a regular car. Um, this all-wheel drive system really can get you into the backwoods, into the back area. Both these cars have very similar lighting up front. They have projector beam headlights and projector beam fog lights on this one, and they are uh, halogen lights on this trim level. And uh, same thing over here projector beam light there. You have an LED daytime running light there. We can show you these lights in a second. I'm going to go take your quick questions right now, or even if they're long questions, we'll take those ones as well. And if you want, we'll show trunk space real quick. And if you want, we'll go to lighting from there. All right. We're at 31 likes, 37 people are on. If all 37 people hit the like button right now, we blow past our goal of 40 likes. So do me a favor and need at least nine more. 37 of you are on, just looking for a couple likes. 36 of you on. I just lost somebody for that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we're looking for a couple likes there if you could help me out. Just going to take your questions, show you some trunk space, and we'll do lighting if you want. Okay, can't wait to see the reveal of the new Kia EVs. Yes, so um, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, I think we lost you there for a bit with the stuff. Okay, didn't get a lot of questions while I lost uh, signal. Sportage getting redesigned this year or next. Uh, so good question. So the 2022 Sportage, I already have information on that, is the same body style. So... This is where it gets confusing. Worldwide markets are going to tell you that there's a new 2022 Sportage. In Canada, that will not be a 2022 model. Uh, so 2022 model, I've already got the ordering guide on that. It will be the same body style. A couple little tweaks. They're going to have a night sky edition, which I'm not 100% sure what that looks like because we do already have a black wheel package, which we've shown this uh, just even last week a couple times. 
Uh, so 2022 in Canada is a carryover. 2023 is expected to be a redesign of the Sportage, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, going to show you the trunks here for a second. This one here on the hatchback we had in yesterday, you did have a button on the back. On this, you have to pull the old-fashioned cable system, which works great. What are the wheel sizes? You have 16-inch wheels over here. You have 17-inch wheels on the... Um, Sportage, both of which can come with one inch bigger wheels uh, depending on the trim line. So the thing I want to talk about here real quick, I'm going to pop this one open for a second as well. The Sportage is known for having a very good sized trunk for what it is. The floor can lower to give you 72 more liters of cargo space. In this video, I won't do that. But everybody knows that an SUV is great for space. I think what people sometimes forget is the difference with the sedan is not so much the floor space, it's the opening. So I'm gonna throw my little teddy bear in here. Those of you that know me will know I like to throw teddy bear into the uh, trunk every now and then. And he is my trunk measurement tool because I could simply fill my camera with a trunk and it would look big. But when you start seeing teddy bear in there, you can start comparing amongst our videos and see how big the trunks really are. You can see in the Forte, I can fit an entire other teddy beside Teddy there. He's gonna have a lot more legroom when he comes this way, uh, but there is a lot of floor space. So if you are the kind of person that stuffs your stuff, your teddy bears on top of each other, then you need a Sportage. But if you're the kind of person that just really values floor space more, the Forte is huge. And I mean, I drive a Kia Soul. I love the Kia Soul. It's got a ton of liters of cargo space, but really a Kia Soul is not much more than Teddy's width. Uh, for trunk space, which is fine for everything I need in my family. But if that's fine, then imagine how much more this is. And what I want to show you is, you guys are going to freak out now because people tend to panic because there's no spare tire. That is common in the class. There's an inflator kit. You also have roadside assistance. But when you don't have that spare tire, you have a massive well underneath here of storage space. So if you're going camping or something like that, you're going to have a hard time not fitting your stuff in the Forte. So that's a big deal here. We're going to throw Teddy over in the um, Sportage now, just so you can see a comparison. And again, I get that these two cars don't compare with each other, but sometimes it's fun for me to do two totally different cars in the same video. And the reason we're doing this today, if you just tuned in late, Kia is making six months worth of payments on these cars. So co contact our salespeople for the full details. That's my little asterisk in the corner. Uh, but it's pretty simple. It's pretty, we've done this before. Um, it's basically just what I've said. Key is making six months worth of your payments. So teddy bear here, again, probably I would say a little bit less floor space in this, uh, but certainly you have the height, the ability to fold the seats down and even tilt those seats on any angle. Like I said, you can put it a full 90 degrees and that's really good if you're loading a box in there. So you've got a lot of space, a lot of practicality in these cars. All right, we are 32 minutes in and I think we're basically done. We can do some lighting if you want. I think I'm going to leave it if you don't need it. Uh, let me just see what you're saying here. If there's any questions you guys have, now's a great time to ask them. I basically, I don't mind staying on as long as you guys have questions, but if not, we'll just cut it short. And, well, cut it short. I think we've done our length here. So I'm just going to double check. Next live Lamborghini Urus versus Telluride and why the Telluride is better performance choice. We actually did do a Lamborghini video on this channel one time. You can look it up. It got almost no views, but it's on our channel. Lamborghini video at the auto show. We thought we just have to have some fun with it. Uh, anyway, somebody says they're making us jealous of us Canadians. Well, that's cool. You should just move to Canada. It's a great place to be. And that's, of course, coming from an Australian. Interesting. Usually the Americans are jealous of us. All right. Uh, I think we're going to leave it there, guys. Uh, we have videos every day this week. Got a lot of stuff coming on. What trim can you get the Harman Kardon system on? So that is the GT Limited, I believe, in the in the Forte here. Um, and the SX trim on the Sportage. So that's a great question there. Upgraded stereo when you move to the very top trims on both these cars. Every other stereo is going to be the same uh, sound, basically. I think they do add satellite radio in some of them at a lower trim. I have to double check that. So great question there. All right, guys, we do a live video like this every single weekday. We're going to do a whole bunch more. If you want to see either of these vehicles again, we'll do that. We'll compare it to different cars. We hit our 41 likes, so I appreciate that. Uh, got a lot more coming up this week. It's going to be a good month, so uh, just stay tuned. we got lots to talk about, and I really appreciate you all joining in. We'll see you again tomorrow.